Alrighty. I am way too close on this screen. Alright, I'm here to let you know the lowdowns of what happened. So, here how this, here's how the story transpires. Sit back, grab you some, a drink and a snack because I have a feeling it's going to be a two-parter. Sorry, commercial. So, anyhow, I went to... I was in pain last Tuesday. It was minor and it increased overnight and then it was accompanied with fever and chills. <sighs> Nausea and vomiting. Okay. By 9 o'clock Wednesday morning, it was so bad that I had called the ambulance to go. And at that point, I couldn't hold down water. I couldn't hold down nothing. I was dehydrated, amongst other things. Um, okay. Um, get there, sit around for most of the day, and they just attributed it to being a bug. Now, I done took EKGs, ultrasounds, and they drew blood. Yeah, blood, but no urine. Um, and like I said, all they can attribute to is some kind of bug. Well, you know how if you go to the ER or whatever, you follow up with your oh, primary care. Excuse me. They say you follow up with your primary care within a week. So, this week I go to my primary care doctor. I go on Tuesday. And I show him my discharge papers and told him what was going on. And um, he, like, he was not happy with it being just called a bug. So he drew blood. Okay. So the next day, Wednesday, I'm sitting at home. Sitting there dreading going out into this heat pick up the kids because they get out at 1 30. 10 minutes after one the doctor's office call my primary care calls and says um your lab results your lab results came in your hemoglobin is a seven and dr marks wants you to go directly to you are and admit yourself so I'm like confused at this point. I'm like, all right, is seven good? Is it bad? What does it mean? So it was like, you you want to talk to him about it, or, or you want to go? I'm like, well, I want to do both. So I call my doctor. He's like that's dangerously low and stuff like that. So he kind of explains it to me a little bit. I go to the ER. And um, they admit me right in. Excuse me. But it was a waiting game because they wanted to run the blood again, run my blood. And also, they wanted to retrieve my files from when I was there before. Come to find out, when I was there last week, it was 8.2, which is still low, too low. They should have kept me then. I was telling Tom, they should have kept me then, then and there. I could have had a transfusion last week. Anything I, that needed to be done, that could have been done last week. But that's neither here nor there. So, I, um, I get the, wait, 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 we do a EKG. Um, they asked me the same questions 50 million times. Um, what else? They finally said, well, we're going to have to admit you, do a transfusion, and figure out why. Your um, hemoglobin is so low. So it was a bunch of a waiting game. It was like, I got there at 2.30. The results came back at like 
five. I didn't make it upstairs and admitted into the hospital until seven. Now, from upstairs, I'm playing the waiting game. Oh, mind you, they had to stick the pinky up my butt to check my rectal, to make sure I'm not bleeding out my arse. So, anyhow, I get upstairs like 7.30ish. I've spent the whole day downstairs. I've only had something, things to drink. I'm hungry at this point. They get me something to eat. Which is cool. And, um... So, it was like basically a waiting game, waiting game, waiting game. They used to be prepping my blood and finishing and admitting me into the hospital. Well, the paperwork and stuff. Um, it wasn't until 11.30 at night that the transfusion started. Uh, oh, sorry. ADD kicked in. Sorry. So it wasn't until 11 o'clock that the, um, they started the transfusion. It was my blood and a um, mix of the saline solution being pumped in. Um, so that took until 2.30. They put me on their type of CPAP machine, which was absolutely irritating because they had a full face mask thingy, and I hate that. I got a little little thing, so I could not go to sleep with that thing on at all. So I was up most of the night. And I think I went to sleep about four in the morning. Um, after it was all done, I, I had a little bit of issues, like, more than halfway through, um, my heart rate changed, and I, it, me, personally, I kind of contributed it to the fact that it's no longer Shonda blood pumping in it, it's new person's blood pumping into it. And it's like, the heck is this? And had to get used to it and adjust. So my heart rate would fluctuate between 54 and 51 or 52. Um, but that leveled out about a half an hour to an hour. And like my, it affected my lungs, the vessels in my lungs. So breathing was affected for a short period of time too. Thank goodness I was on the machine. Lay down. Um, but that only lasted a short time. And like, honestly, when I woke up this morning, it woke me up at like, it was like seven. And like I said, I was, just went to sleep around four. <sighs> Excuse me. So I was still tired, but once I woke up for good around 8.30, they had the breakfast, when I had breakfast, um, I woke right up, wasn't sluggish like I usually feel, I actually felt really good, alert, I could honestly tell the difference, and it made a world of good. Um, what else? So after breakfast, they drew some blood to make sure that my hemoglobin, you know, I ain't going to say that word right ever. Make sure those levels have went up from the transfusion. And um, test results came back and it was all good. But I did not find this out till. Oh my goodness. Um. Five-ish, I want to say. I know I was talking on the phone with Tom. Um, it was after dinner, so I would say it was almost six o'clock. 
when I figured it out uh, when they and then the hematologist doctor came in I had to get verification from him that I was good to go and I talked to him for a while to figure out the origins of why the dramatic drop now I'm gonna get into that later now this doctor had me waiting all day long because he services Jefferson Hospital here in Philadelphia as well as the one I was in and I'm like oh my goodness he's taking forever I just wanted to get home and you know be with my family and um, so my husband's gonna stop worrying too because he was a he was a wreck I know he was um, so um, I set up both the hemoglobin doctor the hematologist the doctor um, I gotta go see him next month on top of everything else, I have to see my my surgeon and my primary care. But I might have to see my primary care the, 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 the. next week sometime. I have to give the, a, him a call to set up follow up from this. So, um, yeah, what? I think I'm gonna go over that in the uh, next video. Excuse me. Um, okay, I got home. It's like 7.30. I had to pick up a couple things from the store before we actually landed at home. The kids was in the car to welcome me home and whatnot. So, um, I am glad to be home. I'm glad to be in my own bed. I'm just laying next to my husband. Uh, I'm just... Uh, so tired of being in that boring hospital room um, this next video I'm gonna do is uh, about what I've learned uh, from this experience and, um, yeah I don't think it's gonna be that long but um, it needs to be said especially for some of you guys that are still of, uh, I guess you could say childbearing years, uh, and have had this this surgery, so uh, stay tuned in next for this next video, and um, see you then.